Radical hydrohalogenation is the addition of HBr across a pi bond in the presence of peroxide. Unlike ionic hydrohalogenation, the intermediates for this reaction are radicals, or species bearing an unpaired electron. The radical mechanism leads to anti-Marconikoff regiochemistry. The mechanism begins with the homolysis of a small amount of a radical initiator, such as a peroxide, upon exposure to heat or light. The subsequent abstraction of a hydrogen atom from HBr generates a key bromine radical that will be active in the following propagation steps. In propagation step one, bromine radical adds to the alkene pi bond. This forms a carbon-centered radical. In propagation step two, that carbon-centered radical abstracts a hydrogen from an unreacted molecule of HBr. This generates the alkyl bromide reaction product and, importantly, it regenerates the bromine radical which can cycle through another round of propagation steps, making this a chain reaction. Termination steps merely explain the fate of the few radicals remaining after the consumption of the reactants. During these termination steps, any two radicals can combine. It's really important to note, though, that the vast majority of product is generated in propagation step two, and as a result, the termination steps are fairly inconsequential. Let's consider the radical hydrohalogenation of this symmetrical alkene substrate. The initiation steps are identical to those that we saw in the generic mechanism previously. During propagation step one, bromine will add to the alkene pi bond generating a carbon-centered radical. In this instance, since the alkene is symmetrical, it does not matter which alkene carbon the bromine adds to. Addition to either alkene carbon will ultimately yield the exact same radical intermediate and the exact same reaction product. During propagation step two, the carbon-centered radical abstracts a hydrogen atom from an unreacted molecule of HBr. The result is the alkyl bromide reaction product as well as the regeneration of the critical bromine radical that can now re-enter propagation step one, making this a chain reaction. When the alkene substrate is unsymmetrical, Addition of bromine occurs so as to yield the more stable radical intermediate. In this specific example, we'll be considering the radical hydrohalogenation of this unsymmetrical alkene substrate. Again, the initiation steps are identical to those that we saw in the generic mechanism previously. In propagation step one, bromine radical will add to the alkene pi bond. As it does so, it can ultimately yield a primary radical or a tertiary radical. The tertiary radical is of course more stable and so as a result the bromine atom adds to the terminal carbon of the alkene substrate. During propagation step two the tertiary radical formed previously abstracts a hydrogen atom from an unreacted molecule of HBr so as to produce the alkyl bromide reaction product and to regenerate the bromine radical for use in another round of propagation steps. This process exhibits anti-Marconikoff regioselectivity, yet it still proceeds through the more stable intermediate. The reversal of regioselectivity stems from the fact that in ionic hydrohalogenation, the proton adds first so as to generate the more stable carbocation intermediate. In radical hydrohalogenation, 
the bromine adds first so as to generate the more stable radical intermediate. In each case, the first atom adding to the alkene is added so as to create the more stable intermediate. Stereochemistry may also sometimes be a concern during radical hydrohalogenation. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it's possible that no stereocenters could be formed, but it's also possible that one or two stereocenters could be formed during the reaction. In this example, we're considering the radical hydrohalogenation of this symmetrical alkene substrate. The initiation steps are, of course, the same as we saw in the generic mechanism previously. During propagation step one, bromine radical adds to either alkene carbon because of the molecule's symmetry. The result is an intermediate secondary radical. But during this first propagation step, a stereocenter was created. Since the alkene carbons are trigonal planar, or flat, the bromine atom may add from above or from below to generate two enantiomeric radical intermediates. During propagation step two, a hydrogen is abstracted from an unreacted molecule of HBr. This yields the products as a racemic mixture of enantiomers. Notice that this second center involved in the reaction is not a stereocenter. In this specific example, we'll consider a reaction that leads to the formation of two stereocenters. During propagation step one, this alkene substrate undergoes the radical addition of bromine to generate the more stable tertiary radical intermediate. This first propagation step also happens to generate a stereocenter. And as we saw in the previous reaction, the bromine may add from either side so as to yield enantiomeric radical intermediates labeled as A and B. During propagation step two, both radical intermediates, A and B, will abstract a hydrogen atom from an unreacted molecule of HBr. Let's first consider the reaction of radical intermediate A. It exhibits a trigonal planar or flat radical center. That's the site where the reaction is occurring, and so the addition of hydrogen can occur from below or from above to yield two stereoisomeric alkyl bromide products labeled as C and D. The same sort of thing occurs with radical intermediate B. As it abstracts a hydrogen atom, that hydrogen atom can be added to the radical from below or from above, generating alkyl bromide products labeled as E and F. So this reaction produces a total of four stereoisomeric alkyl bromides. Notice that products C and F are enantiomers of one another. Products D and E are enantiomers of one another. But any other comparison of products is diastereomeric in nature. In summary, Radical hydrohalogenation adds HBr across a pi bond in the presence of peroxide with anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry. If stereocenters are created during the reaction, both configurations will be possible at any new stereocenter because all reactive sites are trigonal planar or flat and therefore addition can occur from above or below. Radicals do not rearrange as carbocations do. So rearrangement is not a concern in this reaction. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. 
If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback format from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.